I've talked to Karpati about this and he uses our product. <laughs> he hates the sidekick, the the side panel. He yes. just wants to be auto hidden all the time, and I think that's good feedback too because there's like 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 the mind hates clutter. Mm -hmm. Like you, when you go into someone's house, you want it to be. You, you always love it when it's like well maintained and clean and minimal. Like there's this whole photo of Steve Jobs, uh, you know, like in his house where it's just like a lamp and him sitting on the floor. I, I always had that vision when designing Perplexity to be as minimal as possible. Google was also the original. Google was designed like that. Uh, there's just literally the logo and the search bar and nothing else. I mean, there's pros and cons to that. I, I would say in the early days of using a product, there's a kind of anxiety when it's too simple mm -hmm. because you feel like you don't know the the full set of features. You don't know what to do. Right. It almost seems too simple. Like, is it just as simple as this? So there is a comfort initially to the sidebar, for example. Correct. Uh, but again, you know, Karpathy, um, probably me aspiring to be a power user of things. So I do want to remove the side panel yeah. and everything else and just keep it simple. Yeah, that's that's the hard part. Like when, you, when you're growing, when you're trying to grow the user base, but also retain your existing users, making sure you're not, how, how do you balance the trade-offs? Uh, there's an interesting case study of this Nodes app and uh, they just kept on building features for their power users. And then what ended up happening is the new users just couldn't understand the product at all. And there's a whole talk by a Facebook, early Facebook data science person uh, who, who was in charge of their growth that said the more features they shipped for the new user than the existing user, they felt like th that was more critical to their growth. And there are like so you can just debate uh, all day about this. And, and this is why like product design and like growth is not easy. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges for me is uh, the simple fact that people that are frustrated, the people who are confused, you don't get that signal. Or you, the signal is very weak because mm -hmm. they'll try it and they'll leave. Right. And you don't know what happened. It's right. like the silent, frustrated majority. Right. Every product figured out like one magic uh, metric mm -hmm. that is a pretty well correlated with like whether that new silent visitor will likely like come back to the product and try it out again. For Facebook, it was like the number of initial friends you already had mm -hmm. outside Facebook that were already that, that were on Facebook when you joined, that meant more likely that you were gonna stay. Mm -hmm. And for Uber, it's like number of successful rides you had. Mm. In a product like ours, I don't know what Google initially used to track. It's not, I, I'm not studied it, but like, at least in a product like Perplexity, it's like number of queries that delighted you. Like you wanna make sure that, uh, I mean, this is literally saying, when you make the product fast, accurate, and the answers are readable, it's more likely that users would come back. And of course the system has to be reliable up like a lot of, you know, startups have this problem and initially they just do things that don't scale in the polygram way, but then um, things start breaking more and more as you scale.